I'm Pat Mayo, pinch hitting for Mike Cardano today, and I want to talk about Josh Johnson. Johnson's one and a third six run outing against the Tigers yesterday was the shortest of his career. And the major takeaway from the game was his diminished velocity. We're used to seeing Johnson blow hitters away, but truth is, his fastball's been losing steam for years now. Just don't get too worried yet. It was a miserable day in Detroit, and early season cold fronts have a way of affecting different pitchers. Not saying that's entirely to blame for Johnson's struggles, but it would explain a lot. For now, give Johnson the Roy Halladay and Tim Lincecum treatment. Send them to the bench until they prove they can be effective. Same goes for Dan Heron, who was dreadful again last night against the White Sox. Yeah, he got the win, but that's about the only positive takeaway. Long term, he should be fine, but he needs to find his control before you consider starting him again. And in case you missed it, Zach Greinke decided to stage an impromptu NFL tryout last night, throwing a shoulder block at a charging Carlos Quinton. Didn't work unless cracking his collarbone was the desired outcome. This is devastating news for Grinky owners. Looks like he'll miss at least 10 weeks, leaving either Ted Lilly or Chris Capuano to take his place in the Dodgers rotation. Both are crafty lefties with strikeout potential, pitching in the right ballpark and division, so whoever ends up getting the job is definitely worth an ad. If you need to make the move today, go with Lilly. He's the favorite to get the gig. In better Dodgers news, Hanley Ramirez is having the cast on his thumb removed today, and rehab starts as soon as possible. Hanley's looking at a mid-May return. His broken thumb brother, Chase Headley, is a lot closer to making his season debut. Headley's been fielding grounders, taking swings, and could start his rehab assignment Sunday. He should be back by the end of the month. Be wary inserting either immediately back into your lineup, though. Thumb problems tend to create power issues for hitters even weeks after it's healed. I'm less concerned with that affecting Headley, though. His injury wasn't as severe. Mike Morse fractured his pinky and could miss up to seven days. And with Michael Saunders already on the DL, the scorching Franklin Gutierrez gets another week of full-time play. He's a sneaky ad while he rides the hot streak. And after missing most of this week with a wrist strain, Josh Reddick returns to the Athletics lineup tonight against the Tigers. Put him back in your lineup immediately. Johnny in Kansas City asks, Pat, who are some two-star pitchers I can stream through my lineup this week? Well, John, it's tough to know who's available on your waiver wire, but in shallower leagues, Jake Westbrook's a name to consider if you're looking to stabilize your ratios. Just don't count on strikeouts. He's at Pittsburgh and at Philly, and he may actually face Kyle Kendrick in a second start. Someone who has more unfavorable matchups, but is a much better source of strikeouts. Sure, he's risky, but really, among available options, who isn't? If you haven't got hooked on daily fantasy baseball yet, it's clear you haven't tried it. But one thing you'll learn very quickly is the importance of a good weather report. Rain's wreaked havoc on daily fantasy lineups the last two days, and if you had anyone in those games on your roster, all you got was a big fat zero and a losing night. Roto Expert's new daily tab has all the info you need right up to game time, and yeah, that includes tracking storm fronts. So make sure to consult us before finalizing your lineup. Find it at rotoexperts.com daily. For Roto Experts, I'm Pat Mayo.